is up bros welcome to the all bros podcast i'm caleb and i'm jonathan and we are a couple of bros on a mission to give you guys the most detailed movie reviews out there with as little bias as possible welcome to the all bros this week on the podcast in 4k spotlight we have one item to talk about um a movie that we have previously broken down on this show uh with Transformers Rise of the Beasts. And then after that, we will be getting straight into our headliner for this week, which will be our breakdown of Saw X. And both of us just like hated it. Just just kidding. (laughs) But both of us saw this today, right? I mean, yeah, I saw it today. And yeah, for oh, can't wait to get into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, So excited. Yeah. So without further ado, uh, let's say we get into it. Let's do it. Need motivation? Angry Dad Podcast. Trying to jumpstart your life? Angry Dad Podcast. You want help getting off the couch? Angry Dad Podcast. You need a verbal kick in the ass? Angry Dad Podcast. You want to hear from somebody who's been through it all? Angry Dad Podcast. I am here for you. You can find me on all podcast platforms. All righty. First up in 4K spotlight ah struggling this week there we go <laughs> first up oh. in 4k spotlight um oh look at that we fr- yeah. we got past the promo before <laughs> sam jumped on wow <laughs> that doesn't we're, happen very often we're running sam, a slacking. little late sam i'm just kidding yeah i know freaking hell <laughs> like uh, we've been doing this for two minutes already like yeah what's the deal <laughs> where have you been all right um so yeah like i said getting into our first um 4k spot our first and only i was busy i was busy doing chores all right i'll accept that answer excuses excuses (laughs) oh man um yeah so getting into our first order like with our first I don't know. Five minutes in I yet. And... I know. I'm. <laughs> I need to center wow. myself. I'm having. I'm having a freaking. <laughs> having a having a day. Uh, getting Are into. You okay. Four... Oh my gosh, dude! You have no idea. Starting off, four K spotlight. Uh, we have one item to talk about, and that is Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Uh, so, Rose, if you would like to walk us through through this. I would love to. Um, so, if you've watched our review of um, this movie, or if you haven't, you know, definitely go go check it out. Um, me and Caleb were not the biggest fans of this movie. We thought it was just all right. Tight when it comes to Transformers movies. Uh, the first one, the original one, and Bumblebee is way better. But looking past that, um, still, though, if you guys want to pick this up, Pretty cool um, slip cover you get for the 4K. Um, they, I'm pretty sure that this was just the theatrical release poster. Um, yeah, freaking basic bitch poster. I know, right? But um, for a second, when I first saw this, I thought Bumblebee had his hand on one hip and then like one hand was just like down by his side. And I just wanted to, I was like, mm, Bumblebee slaying over here, queen. <laughs> <For a second. laughs> but no, he has them both on his hips. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to disagree though with, uh, what it says, uh, below the best transformers movie yet. No, I'm sorry. That still belongs to Bumblebee. Whoa. Ca- Fair. I was going to say, Caleb, you, I was going to say actually... like the, the, the bar isn't very high. <laughs> Fair. So I can't I mean... argue with that. I can't argue with uh, Jeez Louise. I can't argue with you there. Um, but I don't know. Just Bumblebee was so so much better. But um, but the first one is still my favorite. I love the first Transformers. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. First one um, still hold like holds a nostalgic place in my heart. But Bumblebee was really freaking good. I don't right. understand why it got so much hate. Re- I really haven't seen a lot of hate from it. Um, the reviews I mean, I've seen are I've... praising it. They praise it? Are they? Yeah. I've heard a lot. Oh, yeah, of, like, I, maybe just the circles I'm in, because like I've yeah. I've heard nothing but like, oh, this movie's crap. But like, I really well, like they, it. 
Okay, well, the circles you in don't know Transformers, good Transformers movies. Yeah, no. Um, God, they probably think Revenge of the Fallen is like the greatest movie to ever grace the silver screen, don't they? I wouldn't doubt it. Okay, all right. Yep, that tells me everything I need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's the regular 4K. The Blu-ray is the exact same. Shocker. Um, Lame. <laughs> I know. Paramount doesn't change shit when it comes to their uh, physical physical releases. Um, but the Steel Book, though, this is pretty bitching. Dope, right? Yeah, this is badass. I love that. Right. A freaking graffiti image of Optimus Prime, and it says "Till All Are One." I love that. Like, kind of shit movie, but Steelbook, ten out of ten. Uh, oh, straight up, dude. And this is exactly what we what we've bitched and complained about. Like every single episode that we get, so like some of this bullshit is we want freaking artistic uh, designs, and this mm-hmm. is. Uh, chef's kiss yeah it's perfect it's beautiful i'd buy a poster of that dude same here dude i'd get a canvas painting of this oh that'd be great right oh that would be fantastic yeah Mm, yeah man so i'm just sitting here admiring it now like (laughs) that is freaking some good stuff (laughs) right it's so freaking good like whoever designed the steel book like you deserve a freaking raise because you freaking killed it. Yeah. Like you, you can't get better than that. No, you, you can't. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, oh my God. There, 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 that, 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 what the hell was that? I was trying to do Porky Pig and I failed. That, 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 that's all folks for when it comes to 4k spotlight. All right. Hmm. Cool. Alrighty, well, uh, I can't keep track of all my shit today. Well, God damn it, Caleb. Yeah, I know. Well, cool. So, with that wrapped up, I think, I mean, I don't have anything else to add, so we can get straight into this week's episode. Let's do it. All right. First, because this is a horror movie, we are going to have a change of scenery. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's freaking do this. Alrighty, like we said earlier, we will be breaking down the latest installment in the Saw franchise, Saw X. Um, So yeah, if you're new to our breakdown system, we have split movies up into eight different categories that we individually score to come to a final All Bros letter grade. First up, we got story, writing, acting. Uh, We usually do character development, but in terms of horror movies that usually don't have a lot of that, uh, we change it around. So character development becomes the logic. Um, After that, we talk about effects, then music, costumes, and then we give our own personal score at the very end. All of those numbers get magically added up and give us a final All Bros letter grade to compare this movie to others of a similar grade. Um... So with that, if you have not seen Saw X, it is still in theaters. Uh, definitely go check that shit out. Seriously. Because like, we are good, about. If you want a good horror movie to start off your spooky month? Can't do any better than this one. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, we. We are posting the spoiler territory and trust us this is not one that you want spoiled yes so if you have not seen this and you want to or plan to in the future freaking come back and listen to it later (laughs) yeah all right 
Yeah. Ready? So you have you have been properly warned. Saw X yeah. spoilers ahead. And uh, so with that comes our favorite segment, reading with Rose. Hmm. Not mine, but you know, <laughs> nobody gives a shit what I think. Not even one person. <laughs> wow. Damn. All right. All right. John Kramer is told that due to his advanced brain cancer, he has only months to live. He attends a cancer support meeting where he meets Henry Kessler, who claims to have also gotten a terminal diagnosis. A physically de- destitute John later encounters a seemingly healthy Henry who claims to have been cured by an experimental Norwegian cancer treatment conducted by a group led by Dr. Peterson. A desperate John contacts the doctor's daughter, Cecilia Peterson, who refers him to her clinic in Mexico City. John is John is driven to the clinic by taxi driver Diego and meets Cecilia and her team, Mateo, Valentina, and Dr. Cortez, as well as a young woman named Gabriela who claims to have been cured by Cecilia and another patient, Parker Sears, who just underwent surgery. John also meets Carlos, a young boy who lives nearby, and the two bond when John fixes his bike. John goes under for for surgery, and he wakes up to Cecilia informing him that he is now cancer-free. Finding a new lease on life, John purchases a gift for Gabriella. However, upon returning to the clinic, he finds it abandoned and realizes that the whole operation was a scam. Deducing Dr. Cortez was Diego in disguise, John kidnaps him and places him in a trap where he must remove explosive wired wire explosives wired to his arms by cutting through his flesh. Diego survives the trap and gives up the information of everyone involved in the scam. Jigsaw's apprentice Amanda Young then kidnaps Cecilia and her team. The four wake up in the clinic where John and Amanda greet them as the subjects of Jigsaw's latest game. Valentina is tasked with severing her leg with a jig is it is it, is it a jiggly saw or giggly saw? Uh, I think a giggly. Okay, get with a giggly saw. At least that's what it sounded like you said. I, yeah, I know there's a term for it. I, I don't know. I didn't quite catch it. I just I, I didn't either. <laughs> I just um, saw what it did. <laughs> yeah, right. With a giggly saw and extracting enough bone marrow to release a key and free herself. Although she succeeds in removing her leg, her time runs out and she is decapitated. Cecilia is able to call for help, but Amanda shocks her into submission and confiscates the phone. Parker breaks into the clinic, claiming he wants his money back. Amanda restrains Parker while Mateo is forced to drill into his own skull and remove a portion of his cerebral tissue to obtain another key. After taking too long, a heated mask closes on his face and kills him. Gabriella is next and is suspended from shackles around her wrist and ankle while being subjected to ionizing radiation and must use a sledgehammer to break her shackled limbs and escape. She succeeds and John orders Amanda to take her to a hospital. However, before she can, the now free Parker forces them at gunpoint gunpoint to free Cecilia. Cecilia breaks Gabriella's neck and reveals she called Parker, who is part of the scam, to free her. She forces John to chain himself in her trap. She hears Carlos outside of the facility and, having noticed John befriend the boy, chains him up opposite John on a seesaw-like trap, which waterboards them with blood. Parker and Cecilia leave to retrieve the bag of stolen cash from John's control room. However, a tripwire is activated that seals Parker and Cecilia in the room and frees John and Carlos. John reveals Diego gave up gave up Parker as one of the scammers, and he tricks Cecilia into luring him to the facility. A deadly chemical gas begins filling the room with the only respite. Resp- resp- respite? I don't know this word. This is really sad. Resp- respite. Caleb, do you know how to say this word? R e s p i t e. Is it respite? R e s. P I T E P I T res well, it sounds it looks like or it sounds like respite. That's what, okay. So we're I've never go heard that. that word in my life. Yeah, right. With the only respite being a ventilation hole large enough for one person's head. Cecilia stabs Parker to death but can only watch as John, Amanda, and Carlos, to whom John gave the money, leave the facility while she is left imprisoned. Sometime later, Henry awakens in a d- dilapidated Dilip- yeah, dilapidated bathroom with a new trap strapped to his stomach, overseen by John and Mark Hoffman. Oh, I think that one's dilapidated. Oh, it's dilapidated? Thank you. Yeah. Hey, my bad. There we go. Dilapidated. Yeah. 
Um, <sighs> dude, let's freaking just Ow. getting into this freaking. Oh, oh. So Bro. good. <laughs> so, so good. Like, I love so it's so nice. It, or It was so nice to have John Kramer back at the helm of this franchise and this one, because honestly, for everything that they've done with the other entries in this franchise after the third one, I kind of forgot just how gripping and captivating John Kramer is as a character. And once again, once again, the, I mean, we'll get more into this with the acting, but Tobin Bell is just such a presence on screen as John Kramer. Um, and just even though we know what happens after this movie, you know, we, we know what you know, what we know, what happens with him and his cancer and everything. Just watching him take this final chance that he thought he had to get cured of his cancer is honestly really hard to watch like this first half hour. Like I was, I kind of forgot about the, uh, the second and third, because I thought there was there, there might've been a chance that, uh, John Kramer could have been cured by cancer, but, um, the way that it plays out, of course, that, that is not the case, but like, yeah, the, the moment when he finds out that it's a scam, um, like everything that leads up to that, especially when he's in the room and he freaking, um, like, uh, like when he's in, when he's on the operating table and um, the doctor straight up asked the nurse, oh, turn the TV so he doesn't see. Like, I don't know, maybe <sighs> that is just so shady to me. I'm sure that like, you know, like some doctors would be like, oh, yeah, we don't want our patient to see that. But at the same time, I'd be like, OK, like you're trying to hide something from me, right? Like if if I'm in and out of consciousness and I can clearly see the screen that you're perf- that is show is showcasing quotation marks um, the surgery that you're doing on the back of my head, and you turn it away from me. I feel that you're hiding something, um, and so, and of course that that is showcased because after you know he they say that he's cured, he goes to deliver a gift to um, oh my god, what is her name? Uh, Gabriella. Gabriella, um, and he discovers that the uh, place that he had his um, procedure procedure is completely trashed. But he finds the um, the monitor, and he finds that it's connected up to a DVD player. And um, they were actually just uh, show they were just playing a freaking um, uh, a clip uh, from a uh, brain surgeon um, DVD of of how like what was it like the the um, I don't even know what the hell it was called. For a it second, was like an, a neurosurgery tape. That okay. For a second, <laughs> I straight up thought it was like a how to how to do surgery for dummies kind of thing. It basically that, that, was. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, so which, I I wasn't too. I had a feeling like the whole thing was fake. Um, just because like of a one of the trailers that I saw kind of gave that away which i can't like i know they had to but it kind of sucks that they did yeah but it's it's like i i, I kind of had a feeling that the whole thing was was fake yeah. but i will say i kind of did think that they were actually performing surgery on him the, I, like, I, I just i just thought that they were performing just some rando surgery and then being like oh we fixed you and so he'd go off and on his merry way um, I didn't no, think I it was this... as elaborate as of a con as it was. Um, that, but like, when I was nothing was inserted into his his head, not even a scalpel, which I thought I I swear they that didn't we even cut his hair. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, they didn't cut his hair. Um, we see a scalpel touching skin, but yeah, that that it didn't actually happen. Um. Yeah, they, like fake blood and shit. Yeah. So like, this is what I think that they were doing is that they were making it seem like it was a mistake, like that the the, the surface was just so reflective. And then it's like, oh, we see that he's seeing this and then, yeah, they're shifting it and then they just dope him up again. So he passes out and then they finish the surgery. Um. But I think that they were, I think that like, 
it was a good sell because it's like oh, oh yeah. we didn't really or like it just kind of shows like oh maybe we didn't think about this like about this whole situation this this con or or what or not the con the it was like an oversight like oh we didn't realize that the surface would reflect and like oops like one of those deals yeah so i think it was like to keep him from like panicking so like that was my justification like okay that's why they're doing that i thought it was like actually his brain and then i was like they're not doing anything it just looks like they're poking his brain a little bit and so when it turned out to be like a tape i was like oh shit like i mean kudos to them because yeah i thought i thought the same thing as you like i actually thought that they were going to try to make this look real um with you know actually like making contact with his head cutting it open you know actually making contact with his brain but no it's just a freaking videotape yeah but dude i so i loved the structure of this story like this is kind of like as perfect as you can get in terms of like horror slasher storytelling like the first like the first half hour or however however long the the situation was from like the beginning to when he like figures out like that they did him dirty it felt like a short film like kind of like a short film prelude and then once it got into like the slasher shit like it it, it went full slasher shit and i'm like none of that like it, it didn't try to have any like filler Yes, it did not. Yeah, um, it wasn't like trying to pad the runtime or anything. It was just like, boom, we're like, we're in the action. We're in the shit. And we gave you that little prelude. Because, like, I feel with this movie, you could seriously start watching it right at the point where he starts going ham on them and still get a pretty enjoyable movie. And then same thing. You could probably cut it off at the end or, like, like right before he goes all jigsaw on them and have a pretty enjoyable film. But it's just like combining the two. That's like the perfect structuring for a franchise like this. Give us like, give us a really good solid story at the beginning and then give us like what we came to see at the end. Like no freaking filler. Cause like that was like maybe an issue that I've had in other saw movies where it's like oh they're trying to tell a story in between all the sh- the saw shit and i'm like nah i i want to i'm here for the saw shit <laughs> yeah no no i i agree i especially love that um i mean of course it's still john kramer's game but i feel that even especially in this one it truly feels like that because um all of the victims are in the same room they're not split into different rooms um, like in uh, it, like in um, later installments. So I feel because of that case and also especially for the fact that he is still interacting with them, um, you know, like he 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 literally explains the game in person and then him and Amanda go up to uh, I want I don't want to say their headquarters, but uh, sure, I'll say their headquarters um, in, in this area. And, you know, they, they watch. Um, um, oh, shit. What was uh valentina right that was her name the first yeah yeah you know they watch her fail at her trap um they watch diego diego right? bro he not diego ed um, what is it? carlos right no not carlos what the hell was his name uh uh mateo mateo thank you i gotta say she didn't have to go as hard as she did. <laughs> Freaking Valentino. Yeah. That... She <laughs> when she cut off her full freaking leg. I'm like, you know, honestly, there's like because I mean, um, oh, my God, I'm horrible at names. Um, When Cecilia is uh saying like, oh, come on, hurry up. You only have this amount of time, this amount of time. Whenever like someone's like doing that, they're just like, come on. It's like super easy. I literally just want to shout out. You know what? If you think it's so easy, why don't you be in this fucking trap? Dude, no Excuse joke. Excuse my language. I'm, like, I'm sorry. Dude, no, it, like, like, I get it. It's like, dude, shut up. She's yeah. cutting off her leg. <laughs> yeah. 
like because uh, you'll see that in other installments like especially in like freaking saw 2 like with amanda when she gets thrown into the batch of needles and the guy's just like now come on hurry up hurry up you only got this amount of time come on come on come on you got to save us all and i'm just like dude you try to find a needle in a haystack literally that's how this the trap is in saw 2 you freaking try this out yeah freaking some it's some bullshit no, it, it is really some is bullshit. So I yeah. like every time she was like egging them on, I'm just like, are you shitting me? Yeah. Oh, dude, the freaking it was clever, but it was freaking gross that she used Valentina's intestines as a freaking rope. <laughs> she, she, I will admit kind of genius. Like, yeah, I never I would never would have thought of that, but that was really freaking gross. Dude, when she did that, I was like, dude, this bitch is unhinged. Yeah, she's psycho. <laughs> she's psycho. I, yeah, I, ooh, geez. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get into effects with this, but damn. Um, dude, I, my favorite thing about the first Saw movie was, the like the just the insane twist that you just you never see coming right oh yeah this is one of those that i i was totally just blown away like yeah bye no like honestly because um i actually thought that they got one on john kramer with i know dude me too (laughs) like um (laughs) like i I was telling caleb before we started recording um because freaking so um detective hoffman makes an appearance at the end of the at the, in the post credit scene so it showcases that he's been working with john kramer for a lot longer than we thought he had and so because his freaking audio was spoiled in the trailer i straight up thought when both jicks with when both john kramer and amanda young are um you know trapped in in the trap i just half expected hoffman's voice either come over the pa system or to bust open a door and just save them or some shit like that because i'm just like he has to come in right like he's got to be somewhere in this movie i know he's gonna i already heard his voice in the trailer and that's not a audio that we had never heard that we had ever heard in any of the previous movies he's in so he had to be in this um so like yeah I, I honestly was just expecting that but yeah freaking when the freaking classic you know zep uh theme kicks it kicks in which can i just say i mean um actually wait you know what well i'm gonna save that for music um when, when the classic zep um he- hello zep theme kicks in and we're showcased that no this was the plan from the whole get-go um there were it certain wasn't way- the plan though okay it that's wasn't true. like it was just, it was the backup plan that's true there were so th- that's oh yeah that's true john did say that there were certain ways that this that this uh trap could go or this game no he could like, go the, right his, his exact wording was one way or another like they will play the game and that's what it was i'm like Dude, when he said that, I was like, freaking A. But <laughs> when he, like, when he, like, yeah, when he, like, was, got strapped in to his own trap, I was like, I was stressed. I was just like, bro, how? Oh, <laughs> like, how do I ah, no. <laughs> Like, I, I, like, I was so stressed out. And I'm like, how do you plan for this? And then this, like, I didn't get suspicious. Like it was uh what's his face, Parker, that like he, when they were up in the room and he's just like, wait a minute, like how who who was that second space for? Like it was only you let and then like she pulls the bag and everything locks up. I'm like, <gasps> dude. <laughs> yeah. I like my mind was freaking blown. Dude, literally, no matter what they throw at us. John Kramer is truly always one step ahead. Like this has got to be one of the smartest guys to ever grace the horror franchise. If not the smartest. Easily my favorite too. Oh yeah, dude. I love John Kramer. Saw is, I will say, I think out of every horror franchise, Saw is my favorite. That's good. 
I won't say it's my favorite, but I will say that there is not one. So I will, I will, sh- I, hmm. there are certain saw entries that I will, you know, give crap to, but, um, I feel to me saw saw is the rare franchise that like none of the movies are unwatchable in my opinion. They're, yeah. Like even all, the bad ones are still good. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're all fun to watch. Um, Cause even if you don't love where the story goes and the characters go, you're still, you still get great traps in every single one. Yeah, dude, that's like, there's not very many franchises. I feel like that with like, say like, I feel the, the same way with Marvel, same way with Spider-Man movies. Um, like none of those are unwatchable movies. Like I'll even admit there's some like uh, Halloween. I find Rob Zombie's Halloween two unwatchable. Um, and so I can't say that Halloween is one is the franchise that I can watch all of them. Saw I can absolutely say, from one through seven, uh, Spiral, Jigsaw, and now Saw X, I can easily watch any of these movies and still have a good time. None of them mm-hmm. are unwatchable. Absolutely. So yeah, I I'm a big fan, big fan of of this franchise, and this movie like again just cemented that. Like, in fact, even more, I I had close to no issues with this. This is actually one where typically with horror movies and I, like, I feel like we've shown this in the past. The story for the 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 horror movie isn't always great. Like, it's usually like a slightly above average, like sitting around like an 80 uh, or it could it's it very rarely has it ever gone higher than like 85 I'm higher than 85 on this. I'm not oh, cracking dude, 90s. I'm not. I, I don't think I'm cracking 90s, but I'm like really freaking close. Fair. Like, I think I'm sitting at like a solid 89. Yeah, dude, I got to match you. I can't go any lower. It's just it's that good. Like, I didn't like freaking when this was announced. Like, I like don't get me wrong. I was super excited for the fact that it was. um the guy that directed saw six coming back to direct this one. Cause saw six. I mean, I, I think I got to see this one one more time to like make my judgment. If I like this one more than saw six, um, but saw six up until this point is my favorite entry in the franchise. I love that movie so much. And so when they announced that he was the one directing it, I was so freaking excited and yeah, he freaking like met all of my expectations. Cause for being a prequel that is set between saw one and saw two this yeah this is one of the best if not the best in the franchise we've gotten since the original yeah um my top three are the og um i'll say two two's the one in the house right yes okay so yeah i'll say one two and this one with a close close fourth being jigsaw that's fair okay that that's a good ranking um Um, but this one it's it's come damn close to my number one spot my number ones i have to give to freaking the first saw like half i freaking love that movie you know funny enough the first one's not even in my top three really yeah just because i i want to i want more john kramer in that one don't get me wrong i love the first saw but just I, I liked the franchise more as it went along. Well, technically, um, he's in it the entire freaking movie. But OK, that's true. But he does. OK, <laughs> true. But he doesn't say a damn word. OK, fair. <laughs> um, so like that's if just, I had that's just semantics at that point. So off the top of my head, in no particular order, my top three would be um, definitely. Yeah, Saw X is officially joined that that group saw six and uh, i can't decide between saw five and jigsaw so you know what i'll i'll just say jigsaw so so saw x saw six and jigsaw that, that's my top three fair oh man but yeah so sitting at 89 for for story moving on over to writing this is where this movie freaking just excels the writing Agreed. here was so damn good. It it really was. Like, God, yeah. Um, 
I, I swear that um, the way that John Kramer talks about um, why he puts people in these traps, has them play these games, and how it's it's a form of rebirth for them, and just they, it, it's something that needs to happen. Like, I can't help but like agree with him. Like, the, this is some horrible shit to put people through, but the. I mean, to be a better person, I guess, like, if this is the only way, I guess, go for it. Dude, it, it's not necessarily the only way. It's okay. it's the probably the most effective way. That is true, because <laughs> um, if you've only got three minutes to save your life, um, yeah, I think you're going to really appreciate it after if you survive. Yeah, and I think that had... Like, I would love to see more of his interactions with the people after the trap. Because he gets yeah. like like what he was doing with uh, Gabriella. Uh, OK, if there's anything I'm docking for in this movie, it's the fact that they didn't even attempt to change their names. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like, like, come on. I'm like you. You didn't even like attempt. That's con artist 101. Like, come yeah. On. Like, don't use your real name. Like, I understand like the 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 main lady having to use her real name, but everyone else. Yeah. Like, you're doing something illegal. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. So, if there's anything I'm talking for, it's that. Um, but what point was I trying to make? <laughs> I got sidetracked. You got me, man. Sorry. Um, no. So what I was saying with oh with Gabriella, he he was like he was sending Amanda on her way to get medical attention, mm. and like that's something that I would have liked to see more of. It's just like how what happens after. Like I would love to see like Amanda's story like after her trap. Yeah, like, I, I can agree. They they definitely kind of expand on it in Saw two and three, but I I would love to see more. I mean, yeah, a little bit though. It's it's oh, like yeah, not, not as, it's not not as much, much as I would like for them to. No, that, that's fair. I mean, honestly, I feel the same way with Hoffman. Like, I know yeah. that what what happened to him personally, that's what drove him into uh, working with um, John Kramer. But like, yeah, I would love freaking just a uh, a movie dedicated to not only Amanda, but a movie dedicated to Hoffman. Yeah. Those should be the next two Saw movies. Those should. I like, at least, I don't know. I don't know if they would warrant like a full blown film, but I would love to see like a, a short about it at least. That's right. Yeah. Like just, just give us some backstory on, yeah. on the apprentices of Jigsaw. Yeah. Oh, um, but yeah, I mean the, the writing here was like, was perfect because it's like what I, I what I like about Kramer. It's never about like revenge. It's people that he sees doing wrong and correcting it, but like doing something to them that's like related to whatever like their sin was. Yeah, like how like with Mateo having to drill into his head. It was he was playing an anesthetic or anesthesiologist he wasn't yeah and then um valentina was like drawing blood or was supposed to be the person that like drew his blood but wasn't mm -hmm. and then like it was i love like the tie-ins and then the same thing with like uh what was her name cecilia or uh dr peterson like how her thing was these two people that work together having to combat each other and you see how both um how both paths would have worked That's like because in that it was very much um them like comp it was it was both versions were a competition one was just like a straight up fight to the death and that's like what they ended up going for and then the other one was just like a jigsaw trap <laughs> Where it was like, hey, they're tra trapped down and they have to pull their their lever to uh, like drown the other one. Mm. So like I, interesting, interesting concepts.
So I will say though, I did not expect the whole. Um, I mean, it was the poster, uh, the whole eyeball um, trap uh, with the tubes. I did not expect that to not even be included in the uh, the actual game that those people were playing. Um, I didn't, and also the fact that it was just him like thinking about an idea for a game it was it wasn't actually a freaking. It didn't actually take place. I will say I, I did appreciate that though. No, I, I did too. Um, I mean, because that was a cool ass trap. It was a sick trap, dude. Um, dude's a freaking idiot for doing that shit one at a time. I would have been like crank all the way up to five. No, no, like seriously, like come on, man. Um, like, dude, what? It's like all I have to do is turn this, and like something bad's gonna happen to me. Like with each knob twist, unless it like stopped each one, that would that would freaking blow. Yeah, but I'd be would... like, all right, bet, Psh, crank it. <laughs> <laughs> see you say that now but if you were put into his shoes would you i'm like after i found out what the first one did yeah yeah all right fair enough <laughs> like if i the first one breaks my pinky yeah guess what i'm doing the next go round, all the way up to five all right fair enough i'm not going ah uh, like freaking freaking out about the first one and then going next one <laughs> like i'm not pulling i'm not i'm not about that shit mm. Like, I will freaking break all my fingers at one time. <laughs> well, Caleb's got some big old balls, apparently. Honestly, it's that's not even like close to the case. I'm such a freaking bitch when it comes to pain. It's just like if I know that pain is going to be part of the equation, I will get all of it done in one go. <laughs> that's no, nah, dude, that's fair. That is That is completely fair. The traps that I could like, there are some traps where it's like that I just straight up could not do. Like the the cutting my leg off, I don't know if I'd have the wherewithal to do to pull that shit off. Uh, same thing with like drilling into my head. But I also know that like people do have brain surgery when they're awake, so it's like, does it hurt that much? <laughs> I know there are other know, like man. Let's anesthesia. Make an appointment and let me know how it goes, okay? Yeah. 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 It's like I know that they're under anesthesia for mm. for that. Or just like they're numbed up to like no end. Yeah. But it's like once they, they, they can't numb your brain. That is true. That is a good point. So I'm assuming the brain doesn't have any nerve endings. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I would assume that too. So I, I think, I don't know. Dude, that one hurt my head. Like I was, I was like sitting there, just like no, <laughs> with freaking Mateo's trap. I was ugh, absolutely the hell not, dude. Freaking the eyeball one hurt my eyes. I mean, shocker. Um, but like I expected, because like I, I don't know. My thought was just like, oh, uh, you know, if you can't beat the timer, like acid gets poured down the tubes and you know goes into your eyes. No, That's what I thought too. Right? No, a freaking vacuum just sucks up your eyeballs. I know, freaking like I gotta say, I'm impressed with the suction of that vacuum. Oh, I'm too. It's got it's gotta be a Dyson, right? <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Took my joke. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is one I the writing is higher. So the That's writing's fair. definitely cracking nineties for me. Yeah. So man. where are you sitting with writing? I would say I'm probably at like just just because it was just so, so good. I'm going to go a 92. I might be like one point higher. It's like sitting at Hell 93. Yeah. I was going to go nice. with the 92, but I think he, after hearing you say 92, I'm just like, it felt I, low. I no no just 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 say you want to one up Rose. It's all good. No, I did want to one up you. It was it was seriously my. I was thinking like okay, I'm going with a 92, and then it's like have you like you know how it is. Like I said it out or you said it out loud, and so I'm like, seems low. <laughs> nah, dude. That nah, dude. I get it. I get it. All right. Um, moving on over to acting. Uh, we have. Tobin Bell, who played John Kramer slash Jigsaw. We have Shawnee Smith, who played Amanda Young. 
We have. That's a long name. Sinove, Sinovi, Sinovi McCody Lund, who played Cecilia Peterson. So she was like the main doctor. Uh, we have Renata Vaca or Vaca, who played Gabriella. We have Octavio Inojosa. Inojos. I think it's Hinosa. I think it's Jay Silent. So yeah. Jay Silent. That's a weird freaking name. But anyway, Hinosa, who played Mateo. Uh, Paulette Hernandez, who played Valentina. Uh, Stephen Brand, who played Parker Sears. Joshua a- Akamoto, who played Diego. And then a small cameo from Costas Mandalore, who p- played Mark Hoffman. Yeah, buddy. All right. So I think we're at... If I, I'm, I'm like 99% sure our top two is the same. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So number one, I think we're both given to Tobin. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Yeah. He is just he's fantastic. He he has made this franchise. Um, there's no just, saw franchise without him. No, there's not. He's freaking jigsaw. Um, and the fact that this movie got to bring him back into the forefront just made me so freaking happy. And this is to me, his best performance in this entire franchise, like absolutely incredible. Dude, he did so freaking well in this, like, oh man, I can't get over it. Right. It's so, so good. I cannot wait to see this movie again just to watch how amazing his performance is, like the first 30 minutes, especially like his performance is great throughout. But that first 30 minutes of him, you know, like finding out about the procedure and going to get it, and, you know, finding out that it's it's all a scam. His acting is so on point. He's freaking phenomenal. Like it's it really just is. like it's the subtleties in his acting, too. Yeah, like I I love that he he shows such a control like a, a control of his emotions in in this film, like when he's going through and he's like discovering that everything that he experienced was fake. It wasn't like like he has that moment where he like smashes that that bottle of tequila, but it's just like. You could see that he's just he's like fuming, but he still has like that that fortitude to know that they everyone that was there in those games deserved a second chance. Mm-hmm. And it I f- like freaking loved it. Like it's just like such a subtle performance, but so freaking powerful, too. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, then I'm assuming you're given number two to Shawnee Smith. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I freaking loved having her back as Amanda. Honestly, I feel she does not age. She looks really looks the same as she did, especially in the third one. There is only one problem I have with her in this movie. It, the I, haircut. Uh, yep. That's literally <laughs> the only problem. <laughs> Cause Dude, I, I, like that, the hair was distracting. <laughs> Dude, right? Because I went back and I looked at like images between Saw One and Saw Two. She never had that haircut. Like it was, it was either longer or kind of like like messy. So, so it was still longer than this, but like it was kind of like messy. Like this one? No, this wasn't even messy. Um, it it it, it didn't work for Amanda. It I hated it. Um, but dude, like this that, was like Stranger Things level bad haircut, dude. Right? <laughs> I mean, this this definitely comes more like would that more come more into costumes? Um, I am throwing it in costumes. Yes. Okay. Um, like costumes, so looking past I'm, that, I, yeah, costumes. I'm counting like, uh, it's like makeup, their outfits, and hair. Okay. That's just, what okay. I that's that's what I personally throw into. No, no, that, no, I definitely agree. I just want to make sure. Um, but uh, looking past that, like freaking absolutely phenomenal. Um, she de- she has not missed a beat since she left the franchise and saw three um, and the um, the dynamic that they add even more so to um, the relationship between her and John and just how much he means to her, how much she owes his life to him. Um, 
like how it honestly feels like I, you can either say a father daughter or a granddaughter, uh grandfather relationship, like either, or I don't really care which way you want to say it. It just like the, it just feels so natural between those two. Um, and just seeing their relationship, seeing us be able to even understand their relationship even more in this movie, um, I freaking loved. So, she, yeah, she was absolutely fantastic. Loved seeing her return. Dude, same here. Um, I loved the the points that she or like the the what is what was going to say the um, the sympathy that she has towards Gabriella being like a drug addict and pointing that like bringing that up to Kramer and him being like that she needs this like and like if her if she values her life enough she will do it like she will make it through this and she will be better off for it and you could tell that she was struggling with that because she, she I, I think I genuinely think that she would have let Gabriella go. Oh, yeah. Had absolutely. Kramer not been there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like on, and for how broken up she is when. um, uh, Oh, my God. Um, Cecilia. Yeah, Cecilia breaks her neck, get, breaks Gabriella's neck. Dude, um, that ew, that was hard to watch. Um. Because, yeah, the fact that, like, John, John's literally about to, you know, be um, put into his own trap, and he's still adamant on, no, Gabriella needs to get to the hospital. She won her game. She she deserves to get the medical help that she, that, 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 that is needed. Yeah, dude, I, gosh, this is why I freaking love Jigsaw. Because, like, I've never really liked people or, like, the slashers where it's, like, the, the villain or like the baddie kills just to kill. Like it, it's, it's not a motivation that I care for. And yes, I, I am throwing Michael in that. that oh, no, ring. no, I figured his, motiv- that his, mo- his motivations are weak as shit, but like, just because he like wants to kill, I'm like, meh, don't like that. It, it, like j- interesting. A, uh, a ru- I love, rough justice and like this is kind of why i have a real uh soft spot for like the punisher because it's like that's exactly what he he does it he's getting justice a little harsh but he's getting justice and no, touche. yeah so it, it's like it's the same thing like for me i view jigsaw as just like a more disturbed punisher <laughs> I like that. That's a cool way to look at it. Yeah, where I mean, I'm pretty sure John Kramer like would <laughs> would like Punisher would see his shit and be like, "Damn, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that effed up." <laughs> like shit, I'll just shoot him in the face, man. <laughs> like save ninety nine percent of this sh- trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, so loved her i i love the um the empathy that she has and just the way that her and john were able to discuss why she needs to be part of her own game and hers was rough as shit dude oh yeah like <sighs> she, she yeah she was the first one to try out to uh, be assigned the reverse bear trap so we oh, no, I wasn't talking about Amanda. I was talking about Gabriella. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Amanda's game. Um, yeah, no, Amanda's no, serious... game was freaking rough, but yeah. Yeah, no, dude. Seriously, when um, uh, Cecilia is just like, oh, uh, break your uh, break your leg first. Um, so you'll swing out of the out of the way of the uh, radiation um, and free. <laughs> So he breaks her like, and all of a sudden it pauses for a minute, and then the freaking fan or whatever, whatever the hell it's called, um, literally just moves down to where she's at. I'm just like, well, ain't that bad, a bitch, dude? I that logic didn't like fly with me. All right, fair. Because I was like, no, because think about it. it she breaks her hand first. She's going down to the ground. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> God, 
I just... God damn it. Yeah, that's God damn... how did I not think of that? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I would I know I would not survive a saw trap. I I depend it's honestly depending on the trap. Dude, for I me. dude, dude, I would have just hoped that we are thrown into one together because I'm like leaving it all up to you for us <laughs> when it comes to survival. <laughs> I'll try my best, but I ain't gonna be help- that helpful. Yeah, but uh, dude, I I was when she did like when Cecilia did like swing out of the way, I was just like, oh, okay, good. Like, like what what's already happened to her is freaking rough, and the damn freaking radiation thing started moving. I was like, no freaking way. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I felt the same way. I'm just like, oh well, ain't that bit bad, bad a bitch? But I'm just like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, no, John Kramer wouldn't have. She he wouldn't have let her get off that easy. Not not just like oh hey you know you only have to deal with one you only have to deal with it in one um, position. You know after that it will be easy to break the other part of your body to get out of the out of the shackle. No, she's gonna have to deal with that shit from Wolf. So I want to know what what the plan was if she did break her hand first, because then she would have fallen to the ground. Then what? Does it like follow her down to the ground? Because then she can like I'm assuming so move out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, one way or another, it was gonna find it. Was, I don't know. It, it one way or another, she was. I I don't know where the hell I'm going with that. Yeah, I I was. That's when I started getting a little suspicious of Cecilia, being like, "Hmm, that doesn't math." <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, that didn't even click in my head. Yeah. Like I said, I I'd, I'd be screwed if I was in a saw trap. Yeah. Um all right, who's your number 3 going to? Um number 3 I got to give to uh Sine- Sinove Makoti Lund. I'm sorry for butchering her name so bad. I played Cecilia. Cause like honestly, at the beginning, the way she just felt so, it truly felt like she cared for these patients that she was uh, taking, um, and she be- believed in what she was doing. She was doing it at, I mean, yeah, she was charging a shit ton of money, but what she was doing felt genuine. It felt like she was, you know, an actually good person uh, for what she was doing. But then, just you find out how like conniving and honestly, just how much of a bitch she really is. And just, I freaking loved it. And she sold it so freaking well. She was so fantastic. Um, like, honestly, like, you know, like we read, she dies. But, like, I would have actually loved to see her in more in more of this franchise. Because, yeah, she freaking killed it in both being sympathetic and understanding. Um, and then switching to the whole like oh no i'm actually a bitch and you know i don't care about anybody and dude yeah good on her for freaking tripling down fair yeah like when she was just like hey sucks to suck i was like damn and then like like how dude it's just like how vindictive she was i'm like good lord like are you serious like you're still on team like hey they we like like i did what i had to do (laughs) like are you shitting me you just saw someone saw their leg off and then get their head chopped off which dude that was bullshit she was so freaking close yeah no seriously (laughs) like come on and dude i I felt for freaking mateo too I was like, yeah. dude, you, you were right there. You were Mateo, right there, man. Mateo he was the an extra one. 30 seconds. He did. Mateo was the one like out of all of them that like, I honestly hated that he didn't win. I really wish that he would have won. Cause like, I feel yeah. for the most part in this franchise, there's at least one character that you can actually feel sympathetic for that. You're really rooting for them to win their game. He He's definitely for it. He's definitely the one for me. Yeah. I, I was team. Gabriella 
and like luckily she made it through and but and she, she, when she went and snapped her neck i was like damn you it bitch. yeah you <laughs> bitch <laughs> yeah i was not thrilled <laughs> i will say though i got my fourth shocker would go to freaking um if i i and he he gets one line but i don't care i got i'm giving four to costas mandalore I freaking almost like jumped out of my seat in excitement when he freaking showed up back on screen as Mark Hoffman. And because I don't think I've said this on the podcast, Mark Hoffman is my favorite Saw character. I love Detective Hoffman so much throughout this franchise. Um, So anytime that like, not anytime, but the fact that like we get a T, not even a teaser, just like just just a glimpse of him and how um he's been working with john kramer for a lot longer than we thought it just oh it's so good i i felt like i honestly wanted to be like a little schoolgirl and jump out of my seat and i never thought i'd say that <laughs> with a saw movie but like i've seen like freaking like um on tiktok like screenings of people like clap and be like "Woo!" they're so excited yeah my freaking audience got no reaction i'm pretty sure i'm the only one that knew who he was Makes sense. Was your how how crammed was your theater? Not that much. Um, there was a couple in front of me, which they would not start stop whispering throughout the whole movie. It was annoying as hell. Um, and then there were a couple people behind me, so not that big. Which shocker, it's Utah. Yeah, I, I feel like horror movies don't do well in in Utah. No, because um, I was surprised are... there was only one other guy in my theater. Dude, that yeah, that really shocks me for Georgia. Yeah, and especially like, I don't on a know five if it's just Tuesday. Be, I know, right? <laughs> like, no freaking clue what what happened there, but dude, it was like like I so we I did a double feature today. Um, I went to go see Paw Patrol with Iris, um, and that theater was like completely empty, like it was just us. What? Yeah, so I, I was like, Iris like oh. to likes to get up and like run around and whatever, and I was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Usually, yeah, I'm just it, like, yeah, it worked out in your favor. Yeah, so I, like, I don't know if it just wasn't keeping her attention or what, but she, or she's just feeling like extra energy or whatever. But she, yeah, she was like running around all over the place. So I'm just like, mm. yeah, whatever, screw it. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's a kids' movie. Come on, that's that's inevitable. Yeah. Um, and I'll that's share some stories. Too. Like, there's a couple stories from this one. I'm I'm kind of excited to share. Um, but we'll get into that in the one next week. Spoiler. Um, yes. <laughs> it's gonna be so awkward for Rose when he goes to see this. Just. Yeah, good but, freaking luck. <laughs> but you know what? Caleb's wife, Brielle, gave me some great pointers. Um, I don't know why I have to say Caleb's wife, Brielle. She, she's a good friend of mine, so I don't know why I have to say that. Brielle um, gave me some really good pointers of what to do. So I think I can make this look less awkward. <laughs> I think the key that honestly, this is if, if I did not have a kid. And like if we if okay if I didn't have a kid we wouldn't be doing this movie, but if you just want to watch me suffer, don't you? No, no, no. Listen, like if if for what like whatever reason we decided to do this movie, if, had I not had a kid, and we were still like choosing to do Paw Patrol, what I would do is I would purchase a ticket for a different movie. I am not sneaking in to no i'm not doing that shit you're not sneaking why because no i'm i am not getting caught for switching movies just to see freaking pop troll i'll take the freaking like weird <laughs> looks and shit but i'm not getting freaking banned from american fork cinemark it's not like just for a check you never know fair knowing my <laughs> luck that's the day that they are very strict on that shit they're not going to be that strict. And the, the only thing that would suck is if they were on two completely different ends of the theater. <laughs> and then it's yeah, like the would... ticket person's like, oh, yeah, over to your left. And you're just like, OK, cool. And then just walk off to the it's right. Like, do, 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 and... <laughs> Hard right. Like, uh, just... Sir, I said on your left. Oh, sorry. I'm 
I'm backwards today. Apologies. I literally have to get on my hands and knees and just crawl to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Like I, I'll, I will make this work. I, I will make it look less awkward for a 27 year old going into a freaking G rated kids movie. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear this story next week. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I, dude, I am like I'm going to see the latest showing that I can. But knowing my freaking luck, there's still going to be a bunch of kids and adults. And I'm just going to be the freaking loner, 27 year old loner in the back with my hoodie up. Do dude, actually, not, no, I'm not going to do not yeah. put your hoodie up. <laughs> Never mind. Take it. Yeah, take that. I don't even. You know what? I don't even. Don't think even I'm wear, wear a long sleeve shirt. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna wear a jacket. I don't care if it's cold. That's gonna make it look even more suspicious. Okay. Um, I want you to wear like a bright colored shirt, like okay. short sleeve shirt. Like, okay, do deal. not freaking go wear a hoodie in the back. <laughs> Uh yeah yeah this that's, is that's this all is a suspicious this is a wear a bright or like a lighter colored shirt not like pink or whatever but just like a brighter colored shirt like like this color like freaking like the gray like this is what I consider that's like gray a shirt. I thought it was blue no it's just my shitty lighting oh <laughs> yeah so the freaking gray so wear the like a a freaking gray shirt let a light colored shirt. Okay. Nothing dark. Got it. Like, if you even think that uh, is this dark, it's too dark. <laughs> Got it. A short sleeve shirt. Honestly, if you can get away with shorts, <laughs> freaking wear, wear shorts. I'm but not I wearing mean, shorts. Okay, okay, my, fine, my legs fine, are fine, way fine. too white. <laughs> okay, fine. Then jeans and you have to sit in like the front row. Not right, like deal. the very front. You just need to sit somewhere near the front. Okay, got it. Like I will say, f- depending on the layout, like is it? Or no, they have the recliners, huh? Yeah, dude. I'm literally gonna text you as I'm buying tickets to be like, okay, if I sit right here, is it suspicious? <laughs> the closer to I'm the double the aisle, the better. Okay, closer to the aisle. Okay, closer to the aisle. Because then all the parents or whatever are going to want to sit behind you to make sure that you're not doing any creepy shit. If you're sitting in the back, they're going to go and report you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And be like, hey, uh, can we get a refund on these tickets? You're going to you're you're going to mess up someone's movie night. <laughs> you know, it's really sad that I like I I mean, I hope that none of this shit like actually comes to fruition, but it's really sad that we ha- that like someone has to come up with a plan of, to not make yourself look like a freaking excuse my language pedophile um going to see a kids movie like what if i actually was a big fan of paw patrol like <laughs> i'm just saying dude <laughs> I mean, you're right. I love this rant that you're going on, though. Why can't a freaking grown ass man go and watch Paw Patrol if he <laughs> wants to without people freaking being judgy? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this is, dude, I'd feel the exact same way if they ever made like a Bluey movie. Like, come on. Like, what? Wh- yeah. Like, why can't a, why can't a uh, late 20s year old guy who likes so called show? Go and enjoy watching the movie in theaters. Why does he feel like he has to wait until it comes to streaming to actually enjoy it? Like he has to watch it at his home. He can't (laughs) go to the theaters and enjoy one of his favorite shows uh, on the big screen. Yeah. Bluey. Bluey's a little bit more understandable than Paw Patrol. All right. Fair. Because you'd be surprised how many Bluey adult fans there are. A friggin ton. I I am a... I'm part of like this bluey fan page thing on Facebook. Um, and yeah, it is mostly adults and yeah, I'll fully, I'll fully admit I am part they're of the They're the worst. <laughs> hey, that's rude. Dude, they're bad. Really? Like anytime wow. someone like even kind of tries to critique a bluey episode, like they get ripped a new asshole. Really? 
Wow. Yeah, it's bad. It's like really freaking bad. But okay. anyway, that is neither here nor there. We are yeah. talking about freaking <laughs> saw, saw acting X. right now. Yeah. 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 Um. So who's your third? My third? I think I'm going to give to. Oh, damn it. I was going to give it to Mateo, but I think I'm with you. I'm with uh Sinove or Sinovi however you say her freaking name um I thought she gave a really really good performance and went from someone who was like really freaking likable to someone that was just the worst like honestly she becomes the person that's just like I hope that you I wish that you'd get put into the worst trap that John Kramer ever created and just hope that you one, I hope you don't survive. And also at the same time, I hope that it malfunctions and you die a worse death than he ever planned for. My 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 far? only no, my only issue with her um uh, is that she didn't get put in like a really intense trap, but she is gonna end up having like dying slowly. So I guess that's like makes up for it. Yeah. Slow and painful deaths are always enjoyable for characters you hate. Yeah. So where are you sitting at with acting? Um, I don't like honestly, this is like one of those Saw movies that like all of even like the people that are put into the game, like all of them are likable. Um, like even though like I actually even still like Valentina, even though she was kind of a bitch. Um, I still liked her character. Um, so like well, I mean, uh, Cecilia was also a bitch, but. Um, I feel um, out of out of all of them, um, Valentina definitely one. She was the first person to have the game tested on her. Um, but also, I feel like she had like the least to do out of the ones put into the game. But but yeah, like looking past that, like like I said, um, all of them were great. Amanda was fantastic. John was fantastic. Um, and freaking having Hoffman back for just that little glimpse was fantastic. Um so like honestly, I'm in the '90s with this one too. Um, maybe a little lower than writing. Um, so, well, actually, you know what? No, I'm no, I'm higher than writing. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna Matt, I'm gonna go with your writing score. I'm gonna go a 93. I'm going a little on the lower end. Um, I wasn't super impressed with some of the extras. Um, like if. Valentina and Gabriella, like they were good. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, I just wasn't super impressed with them outside of the games. That's God damn it. You, know, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you, mm, I hate you because. <laughs> OK, all right. I want to hear your score first, but I'm, I'm yeah, I'm getting knocked down. Yeah, I'm sitting at a 90. Yeah, I'm going to go a 91. You bitch. <laughs> no because i'm remembering i did not like the way that um uh the performance that Va um gabriella puts on like i don't i don't know just like i know it's supposed to seem like so genuine you feel bad for her but like i really did not i actually liked it when she when we actually saw her true colors of her being a drug addict and so that probably sounds effed up yeah but yeah so i'm i yeah, I got a docket for that. Fair. All right. Next up, we got logic. So this is just making sure that the film that with this being a horror movie, we can't really do character development because there's not a whole lot of character growth within these movies. And just because they don't have character growth doesn't mean that they're not good. So we're talking about like the logic and making sure that these movies stayed within their own logic and nothing was like out of place out of character or whatever the case may be um i will say i was totally prepared to knock this one down because i thought kramer got one-upped but that, yeah that's fair but knowing that he like planned for that like i was like that's pretty freaking good <laughs> yeah um like I, I appreciate that, um, you know, uh, with when, you know, John Kramer was still doing his work, he always made these games winnable. There was always a way to win these. You you weren't just automatically screwed. Um, and as you know, later installments came along, especially when Hoffman was in the driver's seat, there were many times that 
there was absolutely no way that you could have released yourself from the trap in the time that you were given given because I feel it. I I'm pretty sure with every single saw trap that Hoffman was in charge of, they only got 60 seconds. Um, and dude, Hoffman I mean, yeah, was a piece of shit. That's what I love about him. <laughs> dude. I hated that. He never went through a freaking trap. I mean, he did. He did go through a saw trap. Did he, he had the, yeah, no, he had it. Um, he was strapped to a chair and uh, it's kind of, it was kind of like the whole thing. Like basically it was, so imagine the verse bear trap, like, you know, you're strapped to a seat. You have that over your head. Hoffman, the way, <sighs> okay, give me a minute. Cause I, I need to explain the, the, um, the kind of trap that he was in. Like I'll rewatch, I'll re- be rewatching these movies. So which, which one is this in? Is this in six? Uh, no, this, so we get a, so we get a flashback to the type of uh, saw trap that um he was in. And I, it's either in two or th- I think it's in four that we're given the flashback to what trap he was in. Okay. Um. So, oh, so it actually looks like it showcases it in saw five. So his, oh, that's what it was. So yeah, he was strapped to a chair and he had a shotgun in front of him. So like not the most original trap. Um, This was definitely, um, uh, when Kramer was still getting his footing. And I feel that because this, um, the uh, post credit scene showcases that Hoffman and Kramer have been working together since after saw one, um, that even more so showcases to me that he, that um, Kramer was still getting his footing when it came to the, uh, the way that he, the type of traps that he put people through. But yeah, basically it was, it was just a shotgun pointed at his, uh, at his throat. Um, hmm. And I, I forget how long he had to, you know, re- release himself from the shackles. But during this whole time, it's lit- he's literally just in Kramer's office and it's Kramer talking to him. Okay. So, so yeah, so that that's that's um, Hoffman's trap that he was in. Fair. All right. So you would know this a little bit better than I would. Do you think that this kept pretty in line with the continuity set up in the previous films? I, yes, I absolutely do. Um, Especially when it came to uh, John Kramer's um, progression of his cancer, because I'm remembering um, that in saw two, because like throughout this one, you can tell that, you know, like he's stumbling to stay on his feet. Um, You know, he's walking slower. Um, and in Saw 2, um, he's actually on a breathing treatment. He um, Amanda has to wheel him around in a wheelchair. Or is that in Saw 3? No, I think in Saw 3, she has to actually start wheeling him around in a wheelchair. He can't really move. Um, or maybe it's in 2 as well. Sorry, it's, it's been a little bit since I've seen those. Um but um, just the fact the fact that I'm remembering him being having to start being on a breathing treatment and the cancer is just getting worse as two and three take place. So the fact that this one takes place between the first and second and you can clearly see that the cancer is starting to really spread and you can see the effects that it's having on his um, on his stability. Um, yeah, I feel this like nails continuity with um, not only the like the franchise as a whole. Um, but especially his um, his his uh, cancer. OK, hmm. yeah, I'm trying to think of any like instance or wh- anything that like fell outside of the realm of disbelief. Um, but I think they kept pretty in line with everything. Yeah, like, it was I all agree. like really solid and really, really well done. Agreed. Uh, so honestly, I, I see no issue putting this at like, I'm putting it at 91. And the reason I'm going to put it that low is because I feel like there were too many instances where it seemed like people stopped feeling pain, (laughs) like with Valentina chopping her leg off. Like, I think she should have been like in complete and utter agony the entire time. It, well, it mean, felt like she like with... stopped. Maybe I mean it could also just be. I I would love to get a doctor's react to saw. That's fair. The only no, like, I completely understand where you're coming from. The only like excuse I could think of just maybe 
I mean, honestly, you'd be amazed at what you don't feel when you have adrenaline pumping through your blank, through your veins. So maybe as the adrenaline started kicking in more, she felt less. And so that's why she was able to start cutting a lot faster. You know what? That's a fair point. Did I just talk you up? I think you, you might have talked me up a little bit. Oh, well, sure. I, I'm going to I was originally going to give it a 95. OK, I think I'm going to meet at the middle and give it a 93 now exactly what i was thinking so i gotta match it all right next up we got effects so this is all this seemed to all be practical yeah in some way shape or form like other than like maybe valentina's stuff or there was a lot of stuff that seemed like it was uh practical like if it if any of this was cgi it didn't look like it it did not i feel one thing that i love to watch for in horror movies is when someone gets decapitated and you actually see the head and like how not only close it looks to the, uh, the person, but also um, like, like say like the paleness of the skin since, you know, it's, it's lost the blood from the body and just the way that it looks. Um, and I feel this is definitely one of the ones that like has looked um, the best that I've seen um, in a good long while. The Valentina's severed head looked fantastic. Dude, they've been able to freaking nail that shit. Yeah, no, it's, it gets better and better over the years. Because, um, like, there's, like, some movies thinking back that I was like, uh, it's kind of hard. Like, like, see the Chucky when um one of the uh, guys gets decapitated. It looks good. Don't get me wrong. But, like, um, there were just some things on the head that I'm just like, uh, that uh, you're it doesn't exactly match the features that I remember actually being on that guy's face. Yeah. Dude, I'm like even thinking back, like the the replicas that they're able to create. Like, uh, have you seen the ones that they created for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three? Yeah, dude. Dude, th- those ones were nuts, dude. Yeah, that one <laughs> that they created for Chris Pratt that was like scary, realistic. Like, yeah, that kind of freaked me the hell out. <laughs> Yeah, how it, it, it freaking was. was like breathing and shit. Yeah, like, like nope. <laughs> yeah, hell no. Yeah, I shit. I can't think of a single thing that didn't look good in this. No, dude, the freaking um. I feel like one that especially stands out for me is the freaking like blood, blood, um, blood boarding. That shit was insane, and the it. Honestly, it was freaking hard to not only watch um, a, a little kid being being bl- not 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 waterboarded, but bloodboarded. Um, it was hard to watch him, but I I feel not taking away from the kid, but I feel it was especially harder to watch Kramer um, be bloodboarded and just how much he was struggling to even catch his breath. Which you know, of course, that's how it is with being waterboarded. Um, but yeah, that that. The, that looked freaking amazing. All of the traps were so good here. Um, yeah. I will say, like, sorry, I'm going to save. Well, actually, wait, no, I can put this in effects. Um, like, I will say, um, this is probably not, like, I can't say any of these traps are my favorite. Maybe, like, the the eyeball one, because that one just looks so freaking cool. Um, or the, the glass tubes connected. Dude, to that one was whatever. rough to watch because it's like yeah. the eyeball started like changing color and then pfft, it went out of his head. I'm yeah. like, ah. like that, that <laughs> actually, you know, I take that back. That is our, that is actually probably up there for me now with saw traps. But when it comes to like the traps that these people were put in, like it's, it's nothing groundbreaking when it comes to the franchise, but I'm not saying that uh, they were, they were not great traps. They They were absolutely great traps. It's just, Throughout the whole franchise, the bar has been raised so many times um, that I feel it's OK that some of these didn't measure up to what we've seen in previous franchises, because I feel that these traps felt more personal. Oh, absolutely. And I'll and, take more personal traps over more like complicated uh, traps in a, like all day, every day. No, that that's absolutely fair. Um, but yeah, just like. Uh, all of the blood looked great. Severed limbs looked great. The the traps were just as great as always. Um, like I said, like we talked about, even if you hate a Saw movie, you're going to at least enjoy one trap. 
there, there's got to be at least one trap that you enjoy watching. Maybe not enjoy watching. That's probably not a great uh, thing to say. Um, I think we get what you're what you're trying yeah, to say. Okay, there's right. there's an artistry to the simplicity in in these traps. Like there's just like an artistic touch that this film has that I will say like the ones with more complicated traps don't. Yeah, fair enough. So, I mean, yeah, it's super simple, not very complicated. Like I'm thinking like with Valentina, like hers was was super basic. Um, Mateo's was basic. Gabriella's was pretty basic. It was just basic, but like you said, personal. Yeah. And that just that makes it so much better. Yeah, agreed. So, um, I think one complaint that I've had in like other Saw movies or just maybe just slashers in general is that they tend to go a little crazy with the blood. This, I don't feel they did at all. I no, think that I they had just the right amount of blood. Yeah. No, no, you're absolutely got a point because like freaking like Saw the final chapter. That movie goes freaking insane with blood. And it sucks because um, because that film was shot in 3D, um, the blood comes across as pink and not red. And so you don't you don't believe for a second that it's actually blood. Mm. Yeah, that always sucks. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that they they went this this route and didn't like I will say there's some areas where I feel like they could have used more um namely with like mateo's trap because he was like sawing into his head i think that they could have used a bit more but i'm kind of glad that they didn't fair that's fair so it, it's like a, a fine line to walk i know it's like i'm bitching that like oh well sometimes they do too much but this one there wasn't quite enough like i know if i freaking sound like goldilocks here with blood but <laughs> There's a, there's a happy medium, and here I think it was slightly on the low side, but I will I would take it on the low side rather than the high side. Yeah, um, yeah, but I mean, all of the um, the traps and like the effects that they had like looked super brutal um, and realistic, so no real complaints there. Again, I think this is I'm in the the 90s with this one too. Yeah, I. I can definitely agree. This one, I'm, I think I'm sitting at like 94. I don't know, dude. Considering that we both agree on the effects, like, I think I have to agree with you. I'm sorry. All right. Next up, we got music. Oh, man. And this this theme song, it did, it did exactly what I thought it was going to. <laughs> so I found something out interesting that I can't believe I didn't know this about the franchise, that every single ending song that we get um that you know like leads into the big conclusion of the movie not only is it choreographed by charlie clauser for every single saw movie he's done it for every single one but it they're labeled as uh like zep one zep two zep three it's for out through all of the french all the movies it's just zep and then followed by the number that 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 entry is why is it called zep um, because uh, the first trap that we see in a saw movie, or is it in Saw Two? Um, no, no, it's in Saw. Um, the first like, uh, like person that plays a tape is is Zep, and so the classic "Hello Zep, I want to play a game." Um, that's that's where that comes from. Okay, so I dig it. Yeah. But yeah, this, I mean, this soundtrack isn't. I I I it would be real hesitant at giving this a ten. I I could not give it a ten. I cannot. I, no, dude. Same. I can give it a nine. Just as for, I mean, honestly, for like, don't I don't like if you want to give it an eight, I'm fine with that. Like the only thing that boosts me up to a nine is the classic ending, freaking theme that showcases. Oh. This is like the big um, shocker ending that you're getting. Um, you know, we're going to throw a bunch of twists and turns at you. And yeah, um, like it's the exact same thing in every Saw movie, but I freaking love it. Um, so like, yeah, if, if you want to give it an eight, totally fine with it. Um, if you want to give it a nine, I can do that too. Wh whatever you're at, I'll be at. I'm, I'm sitting at an eight. Okay. I, 
as much as that like pains me, I think personally I'm at like a nine. But I think yeah. being like critical, one banger doesn't make for a freaking uh, amazing soundtrack. That's fair. That is like fair. that. It's just amazing Excuse song me. at that point. The yeah. the rest of the soundtrack it was decent. Um, like talking about like some of the other audio. Um, oh, speaking of the audio, I really appreciated that this film did not have jump scares yes like even when freaking amanda is like um getting all of the uh all the people together for the game th- there were no jump scares for her in the pig mask and i appreciated yeah. that so much especially when she's like gr- about to grab cecilia i'm just like i know she's gonna literally be right behind her she's just gonna jump out no i love that as she's checking her security cameras all of a sudden she 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 sees the shot of her roof there's amanda a rock comes flying through down to where she is bam that's and she kind of just runs off a little bit but amanda catches her no jump scare this is how appreciated i, I, I liked it. It. It, ha- it had the build up of a jump scare but not like the full execution. Yes. Yeah. Like it had the, like the build up, like the tension. Like, so when Cecilia is going through her house and it's, she's going like searching through all her like security cameras. And then she gets on that one where she sees like the figure on her roof. Um, They could have easily just been like, click, click, click. And then like, Oh, she sees something boom and then like they could have easily done that but they had the build up so it's like it was it was dead silent for like a majority of the scene and then you see she's walk like you see her walking on the roof and it's not just instant like you see like a figure standing there and then boom brick it's you see her walk boom brick and so yeah. it's like it, it gives you enough time to react to it, but not be like, Ugh, like have it take you off guard. Yeah. And it, it was the same thing with like Mateo, because Mateo was like in a was uh, a vet and he was stealing drugs to give to Gabriella. But um, Mateo is like searching in this hallway, like looking around and whatever. And what could easily have been just a, like the I don't know the pig mask scream and like 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 that whole deal you see Amanda like running and it's like quiet so it's like you it build it it kind of like reduces your heart rate enough because you're just like okay I know it's coming and then it's boom then loud noise yeah so I think it would have been something like if you're not paying attention it would have yeah it would have felt like a jump scare but since if you yeah. are paying attention, it's not. Yeah, that, yeah, that's absolutely fair. So I think that that's what's pushing me at like up to an eight. I think soundtrack alone, I'm at a seven. All right. As much fair of a enough. banger as the the Saw theme song is, like I I I couldn't give it any higher than a seven. But the the use of silences and audio and like the proper build up for, um jump scares or jumps like jump scare lights i'll I'll call them uh flawless so i'll i'll say that bumps me up to an eight all right hell yeah all right next up we got costumes and i gotta say this is kind of where the movie let me down (laughs) that's that's fair um um, I, I feel that the Saw franchise has never really been known for like huge costumes. I mean, you you of course get the, you know like the classic pig mask and the the um, black and red robe. Um, then I I guess um, you could say you know Billy the puppet. But other than that, like you know John Kramer doesn't wear anything special. Um, literally just wears basic clothes. Um, none of the um, victims of the trap wear anything special or victims of the traps were anything special. Um, so like, honestly, those are the t- only, the only two things that I can point out are just the classic pig mask and robe that either Amanda or John wear. Um, and uh, Billy, the puppet. That's, that's really all I can say when it comes to costumes with uh, honestly, any saw movie. Yeah. So this is where I, I, I think I'm throwing the movie a six and that's just because Billy, the puppet, 
That's fair. Wow, you don't like the pig mask? Uh, the pig mask was decent. It's just like, eh. That's fair. I mean, I personally, I, I always it. like, I always like the robes. I like, I'm a big sucker for the the robes. Like anytime, uh, Kramer's worn the robes. Like I, I freaking love that shit. But I don't know. I, I, I think I would have preferred more robes. All right. And like, like I said, I think I, I, I feel like Billy should have been in it a little bit more too, because I freaking love Billy. <laughs> no, I agree, but just I watching loved- him. I I I had to stop myself from laughing like out loud at Gabriella's reaction to Billy, where she's just like fetal position, just like no, nope, not doing it. <laughs> I'm like, dude, girl, same. <laughs> oh man, loved it. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Last up, we got our own personal score. You want to take this one first? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, yeah, this I I was so excited for this entry in the Saw franchise, and it did not let me down in the slightest. This is the best in the franchise since Saw Six, in my opinion. Um, uh, oh my God, Tobin Bell is at his. This is the best that he's been. Um, since his character met his end in Saw Three, shocker. Um, if actually we, no, honestly, this is his best performance in the whole freaking franchise. Um, he truly brings more, not only empathy but more dynamic to John Kramer, and um, what he's able to do with this character still to this day shocks me. Um, the return of Amanda is fantastic minus the hair. That's literally the only problem that I have with it. Oh, we forgot to point out the hair and costumes. So oh, you know yeah. what? I'm glad that we gave it a six. Cause <laughs> I would definitely knock it. Cause I was at a seven, but I'm going to knock it down to a six because of that. Um, the hair by itself would be at a four. <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, very, very true. Um, but you know, her return was great. Um, the whole, the group of people that play the game, um, it's really super good and just the story in general like whoever thought like oh a prequel between saw one and two that's never going to work but the idea that they came up with here that you know he tries to do this cancer treatment that turns out to be a hoax um is just such a clever idea and um you know the the way that he goes about throwing these people into the game and, you know, them deserving to play this game um, for what they did um, to not only him, but all of the patients that lost so much money um, and they were just duped. Just so, so freaking good. Um, Yeah, this, this is, this is truly a franchise best when it comes to saw. And um, if this is the last saw movie for a while, I'm perfectly fine with it. But if this reignites the franchise once again, I'm very interested to see what they do with it. Um, so yeah, I only want them to touch the franchise if the movie's going to be as good as this one. Same, absolutely or, agree. Maybe that's a, that. Maybe that's a high bar. I'll say ballpark. It needs to be ballpark as good as this movie. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's fair. Um. Yeah. It's it, it's just so freaking good. Um. So, you know, I th- I'm going to be at a 92. I put in my score while you were talking and I ended up giving it a 93. Holy <laughs> so shit. I was like right there with you, dude. I feel it's very that we just had a rarity on the podcast. Caleb is higher on a horror movie than I am. I, I just want to point that out. So, yeah, where you're a sucker for Halloween, I'm a sucker for Saw. Yeah, I see? love the Saw franchise, and yeah, I can't, I can't really add anything on top of what you just said. Um, I, I'm a big fan, and I love what they gave us here. It was really well done, and told, just like the formatting, like my my highlight of this whole film is how they told the story, giving us kind of like that short prelude into the Saw action, and then just not trying to like mix in the story with the saw stuff where other films had had done that before and i'm just 
never been a fan of that. And so this restructuring really helped reignite or not reignite, like cement um, my love for the Saw franchise. Love it. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I'm giving it a 93. All right. Going through these categories real quick. Um, starting off with story. We ended up giving this an 89. Writing got a pretty decent bump, sitting at a 92.5. Acting came down just a hair, sitting at a 90.5. The logic of this film ended up sitting at a 93. Uh, The effects scored a little bit higher, sitting at 94. The music uh, ended up getting an 8 out of 10 costumes ended up getting a six out of ten and then our personal score averaged out to a 92.5 so with that the final all bros letter grade for saw x has come out to a okay b oh, plus was I supposed to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, was was I supposed to say drum noise? noise yeah but i'm yes, sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i i didn't know i was still supposed to say drum noise my bad <laughs> Uh, it ended up getting a B plus. Nice. And Hell definitely yeah. one of our stronger B pluses. Um, our yes. cutoff for a B Let's plus go. is, or yeah, our cutoff for an A minus is 90. Um, and okay. this ended up scoring an 88.93. So oh, it was damn, yeah. really close. Hell yeah. That's awesome. The thing, the thing that killed it was costumes. That was yeah. the thing that, that killed this movie. That damn hair. That damn hair. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, so like I said, it ended up scoring a B plus. Let me find out where this ended up ranking. All right. So like we said, Saw X sitting at an 88.93 has ended up below the Mitchells versus the machines. And this is like barely like 0.07. Damn. Yeah. 0.06. If you're going to like round up. So yeah, it's below uh, the Mitchells versus the machines uh, as well as Matilda, the musical, because those two are both the same score. That's awesome. It is below our updated score for Spider-Man far from home. All right. Uh, it is below Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, it's below Knives Out, and it is below Black Panther. All right. So I don't necessarily disagree with any of those. I agree. Yeah. Um, and then go in the opposite direction. It is sitting above the Unicorn Store, which I'll I know you that. agree with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if you agree with this one. It's above Halloween 2018. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't agree with that. You can't? No, I can't. Dude, like you Ooh. said, ha- Saw is your franchise. Halloween is mine. And for how much I love Halloween 2018, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't agree with that. It's only slightly above Saw X for me. Okay. But. It, like, if it makes you feel better, it's close. It's po- it's a 0.3% difference. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, it is above Luca. I, yeah, I can agree with that. It is also above Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, I I can agree with that. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Here. Really, really good sequel, but like Socks more. Yeah, and then it is above Bros. I'm honestly okay with that too. I know, dude. This is why I love our system because it's like <laughs> there's like the ones that we disagree with. It's seriously just like micro percentages yeah <laughs> but yeah i i um i'm digging where this is at i think it, it is well well deserved yeah no i agree but all right so unless you have anything else to to add to this um yeah that concludes this week's episode um if you like this episode want to check out more of our stuff be sure to follow and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts we are damn near everywhere uh apple podcast google podcast spotify stitcher iHeartRadio. uh the only place i don't think we're at is pandora and that's just because they've been a real bitch with our registration process 
No, oh, that's bullshit. But Pandora sucks, so <laughs> I'm not, not too wrong. upset about it. You are not wrong. But anyway, so yeah, be sure to follow and subscribe to us there if you want to listen to the, the show. Uh, we're also on YouTube where you can catch everything that we do. We've now been posting our recommendations there, uh, our video uh, podcasts. Like we've we've been doing a lot over on, on YouTube lately. Um, and then also be sure to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, and Instagram. Uh, we're also on TikTok, uh, all at the All Bros. So just search at the at the All Bros, and you should find us. Uh, and you can find links to everything that we do on our website, tinyurl.com forward slash the All Bros. You can find links to everything that we do in the description. Um, so next week. Not keeping up with the October spooky month theme whatsoever. Uh, we will be breaking down Paw Patrol, the mighty movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is going to be fun. This is going to be really freaking fun. Uh, so I've never had to be critical on a true on a kids movie. This is straight up a kids movie. Yeah. And and we will judge it accordingly. Like okay. we will follow the system and I think it will work out for us. Okay. Hopefully, right. we'll see. I tr- I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. <laughs> yeah. Uh so yeah, you guys can catch that next week and Good night to you as well, Sam. Night, Sam. Thank you for joining us once again. We really appreciate yes. and love having you on. Yes, we do. We need to get you on for reels one time. Yeah, come on. Yeah, we'll even make if it it's with, even if like you don't want it to just be you, I'm sure we can talk either just Sammy or Sierra or both of them into joining you. I'm sure we can make something. Happen. <laughs> we'll just get the whole Nelson clan. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> What Sam? What you can talk Stacy into coming on, right? Do it. Yeah, let us let us know what's like the Nelson family movie, and we'll break that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, oh, shit, that actually sounds like a friggin' blast. <laughs> that does. Yeah, that's that sounds like a lot of fun. Like it started off as a joke, but <laughs> it's like now it's like just... ideas. Yeah, now it sounds fun. Um, all right. So, yeah, you guys can look forward to our that episode next week. Possibly a Nelson takeover sometime in the future. Wink, wink. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. So, with that, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we will catch you guys next week. Deuces. Peace. We would probably scare you, Sam. <laughs> bet. Yeah, bet. <laughs> Sam, may I remind you that I have a John Wayne Gacy collection, so I don't know if anything really scares me anymore. I should scare myself with that stuff, but I don't. Yeah. Do it and you're cool. Do it and you're cool. <laughs> oh, my gosh.